Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video, and today we are going to be looking at the 2024 presidential election, and we're going to be looking at a special matchup that was suggested by someone who did get vac or who is going to get vaccinated. So first, just to start off this video, please do get vaccinated. Like I said, if you message me on Twitter, Instagram, Gmail, you know, whatever, you know, if you got vaccinated recently or if you're planning on getting vaccinated, you know, I really want to, uh, I really want to incentivize that because that's the only way we're going to beat this pandemic. So. If you get vaccinated, you know, sometime soon or recently, message me and I'll do the video you'd like. So shout out to, I am going to keep people anonymous for reasons, you know, of their discretion. But shout out, you know who you are if you're watching this video. So thank you for getting vaccinated. I truly appreciate it. I really respect that. And I'm going to do your video now. So we're going to get right into it. John Bell Edwards, for some background. These are two really interesting candidates because Larry Hogan is a liberal Republican. He's the governor of Maryland. And John Bell Edwards is a red state Democrat. He is the conservative Democrat governor of Louisiana. He is a uh, is a social conservative, I guess, and uh, fiscally moderate. So he's definitely one of the most conservative Democrats you can think of. He is pro life. Uh, he, I believe, is pretty moderate on LGBTQ rights. You know, I he's not anti gay marriage, but he hasn't really campaigned as much as other Democrats. Hogan is pro life, but I think he kind of legislates as a pro choice uh, governor. And he is very liberal on, L on LGBTQ rights, but he's more of a Reagan Republican uh, economically. So these are two really interesting candidates that I think uh, would be a really interesting matchup, but I don't think they're going to run 2024 because neither of them would really win party primaries, especially Hogan, who is not very popular within the GOP because he did not vote for Donald Trump in 2020. He actually wrote in Ronald Reagan. I do believe that John Bellard did vote for Joe Biden, but uh, I don't think he really talked about that because he is in Louisiana. Um, so we're going to fill in the states that would be safe for John Bell Edwards right now. Essentially all of New England except for New Hampshire. Maine's 1st District. Colorado as well. I'm saying not, not Colorado actually. So uh, those are the safe states for John Bell Edwards. Hogan would probably do... I think he'd improve on Trump's margins in Alaska with the oil workers. He's more of a Reagan Republican. I think that would help him there. Uh, Nebraska would do pretty well. In Kansas, I think the suburbs would shift to the, to the right because Hogan is much more appealing to suburban voters than Trump was. Arkansas, Louisiana, or actually, no, not Louisiana. That is John Bellowitz's home state. We could see some, some, some uh, to some extent, some southern reversion. Um, there, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Indiana would be ho safe for Hogan. Actually, no, you know what? Not a thing, but I think Maryland will not be safe for John Bellowitz. So, home state bounces for both Hogan and Edwards. So, 92 electoral votes safe for Larry Hogan, 171 for John Bell Edwards. Uh, now, I think uh, that for likely states, I think John Bell Edwards would carry Maryland by a likely margin. Hogan, you know, it could easily be safe, and I think it would be on the border. I mean, I guess we'll have it as safe to just not be as controversial. But I think, you know, it could easily be likely. Um, because from my margins, likely is under 12%. And I think, you know, Hogan, I think he'd lose by around 15, which is for, I, I know for Let's Talk Elections, those are his margins. We have different margins, I think. So it, it could be likely, it could be safe. So. Take into that, take that into account. So don't really complain about the margin in Maryland. It's really close between being likely and safe. But I think Minnesota would be likely. This is a state that Biden won by seven. I think we'd see some thing. You know, John Bell Edwards and Larry Hogan are both really good candidates for the suburbs. But I think John Bell Edwards would certainly run ahead of Biden with working class voters. So for that reason, I think he wins Minnesota by maybe a little more around the same margin. And I think he'd win uh, New Hampshire by a likely margin, Virginia by a likely margin. Although there could be some sort of bounce for Hogan because. He could do better in the Nova suburbs because he is from the region because he's appealing to suburban voters, but still a pretty blue state. And, you know, it's not like John Bell Edwards is a bad candidate for the suburbs as well. And Colorado and New Mexico, typical likely Democrat states. Hogan, I think that he would care the states of Missouri, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, South Carolina, Ohio, and Iowa by likely margins. So that's, you know, quite a few states, and I'll go through them briefly. Louisiana would usually be safe for the GOP, but it is John Bell Edwards' home state, and I think he'd do really well with black voters there. And he, you know, gets some crossover support from white voters who are Republicans, but, you know, may have been Trumpian Republicans who, you know, maybe don't like Hogan because he's a more liberal Republican or socially conservative and, you know, prioritize abortion. You know, there are a lot of socially conservative voters who prioritize abortion who would maybe uh, support John Bell Edwards in this scenario. So I think Louisiana could be likely even lean, but I think it's in the lower end of likely. So a seven point win for uh, Larry Hogan, maybe, because at the, like at the end of the day, the New Orleans suburbs are still really red. I think even though John Bell Edwards did well there in 2019 when he ran for a governor, I still do believe Larry Hogan would, uh, you know, use these areas to propel him to victory. Mississippi, I think there'd just be kind of a bounce there, similar to Virginia for Bell Edwards because he is a governor of a neighboring state and just because he'd do really well with, you know, some more socially conservative white voters who 
were Democrats 20 years ago, maybe, but not really anymore because of the Democrats' socially liberal stances. Missouri is just a state that I think would narrow up because uh, of John Bellard's appeal to, like I said, socially conservative white voters who are ancestral Democrats, but, you know, haven't really voted Democrats in maybe 1996 or 2000, so I think he'd do better there. Iowa, we, I think Edward, John Bell Edwards would do better in, you know, it would be kind of reverse of 2020 where Hogan would do well in, Hogan would do well, excuse me, in the urban areas like Des Moines, Cedar Rapids, uh, Davenport, um, and the suburbs, you know, Dallas County, he could improve in those areas, Story County as well. Whereas John Bell Edwards would improve on Biden's margin in the rural areas. But that still keeps Iowa as a likely Republican state. Probably like a 7 or 8 point victory for Larry Hogan. But it could narrow up for sure. Ohio I think would be a 5 point win for Larry Hogan. You know, Ohio is really elastic state in that, you know, in 2018 we saw Sherrod Brown be elected by 7. And then uh, on the same ballot in the governor's race, Mike DeWine, the Republican, won by 4. And then Trump won it by 8 two years later. So, you know... This is really interesting, but I think we'll just have this likely because it's kind of the default rating for Ohio. In South Carolina, there'd be a bounce for sure for John Bell Edwards with black voters and socially conservative whites, but still wouldn't be enough to overcome the Charleston suburbs, which have been huge for Republicans in the past, specifically Horry County. Now, for the lean states, this is, what, this is where it gets interesting. So I think Nevada would go for John Bell Edwards by a lean margin. You know, this is a state that is very... Like, I described Ohio as elastic. I'd say... Nevada's unelastic in that, you know, the Democrats have been consistently winning races here by lean margins, and I think there's not really a reason to expect it to shift too much to think Nevada would stay likely or stay lean. The whole Rust Belt, I think, would come through for John Bell Edwards, which I do believe does give him the victory here. It's because, look, we could see some minor suburban reversion with Larry Hogan, but we, at the same time, we definitely see John Bell Edwards doing a lot better with working class voters, and especially with voters uh, in, uh, um, the rural areas of these states that, again, I'll say it again, ancestral Democrats. They were Democrats 20 years ago, not as much anymore. So that gives John Bell Edwards the victory. I think also for what it's worth, I think he'd win Georgia by a lean margin because, again, John Bell Edwards in 2019 is, uh, you know, even in an off-year election, he did very well with uh, black voters. I think that would, uh, you know, I guess it would duplicate or replicate is a better word. Uh, and I think he'd do pretty well in Georgia, probably winning by 3%. He continued the suburban uh, swings in uh, the, you know, uh, suburban counties of Atlanta, but at the same time, there will be some, like, wh when I say that there'd be somewhat of a reversion, it means that maybe Hogan might do better in some suburbs than Trump would have in 2024, but they'd still be trending blue because of the trends, you know. Larry Hogan wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't overcome the trends in America, but he would do, you know, maybe a little better than Donald Trump would. So, you know, maybe, uh, let's take Gwinnett County, which was, I think, like a 20-point uh, Democratic County in the 2021 runoffs, right? Trump would have maybe lost it by 25 in 2024. John Bell Edwards or Larry Hogan would have maybe lost it by 22. So it's still trend blue, but not as much as it could have. So I guess that's the, kind of what I'm saying here. And I think that he'd uh, carry the second district of Maine by a lean margin as well. This is a hot take for sure. I think he'd win it by two or three. It could easily be tilt, but there are a, there are a lot of populist and socially conservative voters who would really really like John Bell Edwards because. You know, people forget, this This district is represented by Democrat Jared Golden. He did vote for Obama in 2012, so I think this district has potential for Democrats just in the past. You know, with Trump on the ballot, it's been pretty bad for them. Now, for the lean states for Larry Hogan, I think he went Texas by a lean margin. Uh, John Bell Edwards would do pretty well with Hispanic and black voters, but I think that the suburbs of, of Dallas and Houston would just be too big for Hogan, uh, for Edwards to overcome. Florida's another lean one. It it would be really close. I think it would be like a two-point victory for um for uh, Larry Hogan, but at the same time, Florida is a is a, is a Republican leaning state, and I don't think that John Bell Edwards would do it like well enough with Hispanics to flip it. So yeah, Florida lean Republican. Now the two tilt such toss up states are really close, and and I'll give I'll give Arizona to Larry Hogan because I think he'd narrowly win it, and this is mostly because Arizona, you know, Trump he did well with Hispanics in Arizona, he did well with rural voters, but he lost it because he just did so badly in Maricopa County in the Phoenix suburbs. I think the Phoenix suburbs are super elastic, and, you know, we saw 2018, Kirsten Sinema did very well in the Phoenix suburbs. She won her Senate race by 2.4%. Then in, it's at the, on the same ballot in the governor's race, Doug Ducey won re-election by, like, 16 points because of how well he did in areas like Mesa, Scottsdale, uh, Carefree, you know, just areas around uh, Phoenix, the suburbs. And I think that Hogan would do very well with these voters, and I think for that reason, he'd narrowly, narrowly flip Arizona. Now, our final state is North Carolina, and, that, and, I'll, and I'll, uh, here's a hot take. I think John Bellard would, would win it. It'll be really close for sure, as it always is, North Carolina. 
But here's the thing. North Carolina is similar to Louisiana, and John Bell Edwards knows, knows how to win campaigns in the Deep South, which is, you know, something North Carolina is a part of. And I think he'd do very well with black voters. He'd do very well with suburban voters because, you know, the, the suburbs of the South are different than the suburbs in, you know, Arizona. And I think he'd also do very, very well with rural socially conservative voters. You know, he could win areas like, you know, for example, um, uh, Matt Madison Cawthorn's district, which is, I believe, the 11th district in North Carolina. I, I could be wrong, but it's the seat is essentially kind of this part of North Carolina. It's semi-competitive. It's, it's about, you know, the Republicans usually win it by 10 on average, but... There is, uh, there are areas, uh, you know, in um, Asheville, for example, Asheville uh, is a pretty blue area of the district, Buncombe County, and it is uh, really democratic, and then the rest of the district is pretty red, uh, rural areas, so it's it, it makes for a semi-competitive district, but I think John Bellards would thrive there because he'd do well with the black voters inside of the city, like Asheville, but he'd also really improve with socially conservative white voters outside of uh, the city, and, like in rural areas. So I think for that reason, North Carolina is a perfect state for John Bellards to carry, by like an Obama 2008 margin, it would be really close for sure. But I think he narrowly carried it. So that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.